Hello and welcome to Starting Point. I'm your host, Jay Brenneman. This is your introduction to newsmakers from around the region who are making positive impacts in their communities. Today we're joined by Eric Walton. Eric is a student here at Edinburgh University and he's also an Afghanistan war veteran. Eric, welcome. Pleasure to be here, Jay. Well, first off, tell me why you came to Edinburgh. Where are you originally from? Uh, I'm actually originally from Portland, Oregon, and I started researching college while I was deployed. <clears throat> First thing I typed into Google was uh, top military friendly schools, and Edinburgh is pretty high up there. So that's where I started on uh, researching in. So you're originally not from the area, but were you familiar with the area at all? Or? Uh, yeah, I lived down in Pittsburgh okay. for about six years um, and graduated from high school down there. But now I've lived all over the country. Now Oregon had been your home. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so other than the college and you had some uh, family and friends uh, in, the, in the region, uh, was there anything else that, you know, as to why? Because you really could have picked up and gone anywhere. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, coming off active duty, I uh, had a one-way ticket to pretty much anywhere I wanted to go. But um, being that it's in a region where I know I've got some uh, friends, family, and other, other relationships, uh, thought it was going to be a good starting point, which it was. And personally, I like the snow. You don't hear that too often. Um, I think uh, this time of year, a lot of people are uh, quite happy with uh, small talk, uh, uh, circling around uh, the snow and how much uh, it, you know, people you know, are trying to get away from it. But, no, avid snowboarder. Yeah. So. Uh, Good. It's a hobby. Good to hear. So when did you join the military and why? Uh, I joined the military February 20th of 2009. Um, for me, it was a, a bit of a rite of passage. come from a pretty long line military, uh, military family. So it was a, a bit of that and also just the opportunities that came with it uh, after uh, getting out, uh, even though I'm still in now. Uh, the benefits uh, speak for themselves. Did you, so you joined right after high school? Yes. Uh, how many friends or uh, other students of you know, your peers, how many joined the military besides yourself? Uh, we actually had a, a small group while I was in high school that uh, each one of us were pretty much representing what every branch. Oh, no uh, yeah, and one Air Force, Marines, um, Coast Guard, and, and Army. Uh, Oh, and we had one graduating before us. He went Navy. So why why did you cho choose the Army? Uh, once again, a lot of family in the Army. Uh, I saw a lot of the benefits um, from with it, and uh, that from everybody that I talked to, that uh, the Army was whatever you put into it, you got out of it. So I wanted to put a lot in, and from that, I got a lot out of it. So you joined uh, active duty or you joined the reserves? Uh, active initially? duty initially and okay. then uh, switch over to the reserves um, prior to or post deployment. Okay, so when you signed up on uh, active duty, uh, tell us a little bit about that process of how you went from being this high school graduate to being this soldier. Uh, it was pretty immediate after leaving school, um, straight to basic training, AIT. Uh, and so what, and, and for those oh. of our listeners that do not know, uh, basic training is the initial training that all civilian members go through. Yeah, common uh, term, uh, boot camp. That's where they transition you from. Yep, and then uh, AIT is your advanced individual training, which would be your specific military uh, occupation. Uh, mine was 12 Bravo combat engineer. Tell me a little bit about uh, what that means, combat um, engineer. What, is, what does that mean? Combat engineer is a uh, explosive ordnance specialist, um, in it ranging anywhere from uh, light and heavy construction uh, to light and heavy demolitions. Uh, we're so you blow things up. Yeah, big yeah. and small. Uh, there's there's that, and also uh, a key part of our mission, um, whether it be uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, we transitioned into a lot of route clearance. So that means. Um, any of the roadside bombs, IEDs, or improvised explosive devices, we're the ones going out and leading the way on finding them. 
Did you know? <coughs> did you know what, or did you have an idea of what you had installed for you whenever you signed up? Did you Did you think I'm going to be in a combat zone, Afghanistan or Iraq, and I'm going to be out there, uh, you know, rolling over, blowing up, uh, destroying some of these bombs? I mean, when you when you signed up to be this combat engineer, what was what was your perception? I was fairly well aware of uh, what was happening. Uh, my stepdad at the time was. Uh, he used to be a combat engineer. My recruiter was a combat engineer. But to be honest with you, they did leave the route clearance part out of it. Um, when you went to training, uh, and when you were in basic training, or boot camp, or some of the other branches, but when you were in basic training, uh, tell me a little bit about, was there a point when you, were, when you thought, what did I get myself into? Or was it one of those things that every step of the way, uh, it was, you knew you were right in the right place? Um, what I had said before as far as what you put into it is what you get out of it. Uh, I knew I wanted to do that. I was an easy recruitment. I walked into the recruiting office at 17 and said, you know, where do I sign? Uh, you know, what, get me in here. And so I, I, I had an idea, but you're never really prepared for it until you go through the steps. Uh, and throughout boot camp and my uh, any advanced training thereafter, I'm um, sure there are moments of doubt and you know wondering what you're getting yourself into, but a lot of the time it was pretty high tempo and I enjoyed it. Uh, I, kn I knew whatever I was getting into thereafter, the drill sergeants were pretty straightforward. And although you were 18 at the time? 17. 17 at the time. Um, did you have this future vision as in when I'm 20 something I'm going to be here? Did you see yourself being in uh, the military for life? I mean, what did you think you'd do a few years and then get out? Like, did you know where you would be or? Well, I, my initial that? contract uh, was for six years, so I knew I was dedicated uh, to that right off the bat. Uh, I'm reaching that six year mark actually this month, and I signed up for another three. Um, my thought process on it, uh, since you can retire from the military after 20 years, is that uh, if I do 10, I can go all downhill from there, and uh, as far as time goes, uh, get over know, that. Hump yeah, get over, get over the hump, and uh, you know, finish it out with another ten years, and be able to retire by the time I'm 37. Sounds pretty good. Sounds like a good, good deal, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me why, um, how you, how you ended up in the reserves. Uh, coming off of active duty, uh, from the, from my deployment, uh, I sustained injuries there. And whenever I was uh, transitioning back, I was separated from my unit. And um, while they were returned back uh, to home station, then I continued on. Which was where at? Uh, uh, well, their home station was back in Indiana, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, so when I received uh, you know, my care and I went through the operations and everything, my transition uh, process was through a different unit, and with them, they said you can retain on uh, active duty through mm -hmm. the reserves, or you can go uh, part part time soldier um, and do the reserves and be able to go to college and things like that, and come back to active duty at another point. Um, so, did you have any thought about that you would go to college at 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 this point? Was did you think yes, I'm going to do college, but later on? Um, did it come quicker than you had anticipated, or wasn't it even an idea or a thought beforehand? Uh, I started giving it a thought on the uh, later half of my deployment. Uh, we, we got extended while I was over there, and <clears throat> uh, despite any, um, any bad things happening, uh, you know, being in combat, getting uh, blown up, anything like that, you know, I, I was pretty certain I was coming home. So I was like, well, I better start planning for uh, that event. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started looking into college and considering what I wanted to do and what after was, that. And what was that? I mean, you, were, you had already made the decision of, of career, soldier, combat engineer. Um, but then things had changed a little bit. And then you had to reevaluate uh, where, you were, where you were going and what you were planning on doing professionally. Uh, what did you land on and how did you come across that decision? Uh, well, as far as the 
transitioning back and considering what I was doing, uh, what I wa wanted to pursue on the civilian side, uh, I wanted to either translate uh, well back into the military for going back on active duty. Uh, so I initially um, came to Edinburgh as a nursing major um, and wanted to be a flight medic. Okay. And that's somebody who, uh, tell us a little bit more what, what your expectation or what the thought of, of, that, of that job being. Uh, emergency uh, response uh, via helicopter and to be able to uh, life flight people out or, you know, that's the, one of the companies, Life Flight or Stat mm -hmm. Medevac, those things. Um, but we also have that in the military, uh, which would be uh, the medevac um, procedures. Mm -hmm and the medical evacuation yes um so I, I wanted to do that and after uh dealing with some hardships with uh like my um post deployment um transition uh, i found out that that wasn't for me and ended up when did when did you make that decision to, or when when did you first enroll in school uh that would be fall of 2013. So it was just a little bit more than a year ago. Yes. And how long were you in the nursing program? Uh, I started out uh, in the fall of 2013, and then that, uh, that winter break, I started gearing more towards uh, environmental science. And how did, that, how did that come across? Like, w did you take a class, or you were talking to some people? How, how did you come across the, you know, those, the, the science, the other sciences that you were exploring? Well, uh, I knew science was definitely an, an interest of mine, um, even while I was in high school. So that, that's something that was important to me. Uh, but I did uh, an internship while I was transitioning back and on um, still retained on active duty, but serving through the uh, Army Corps of Engineers. And I had met with some environmental biologists there, and I was really interested in the work that they were doing. Um, with invasive species. So after finding out that uh, you could say human relations um, with, with a patient wasn't exactly my forte, uh, I, I thought it best to try something as far as out in nature. Uh, and you're, as you said before, you're, you're kind of an outdoorsy person. You uh, don't mind the snow. You uh, like you're, you liked, uh, being outside. And of course, you did plenty of that being in the military. Oh, I, yes. Yeah, plenty of time outside. Um, so where do you see yourself now career-wise, professionally? Uh, during the, my first spring semester, um, towards the end of that, I had uh, reevaluated <coughs> and uh, figured out that I didn't uh, much care for biology. Uh, you know, it was still an interest, but not something I wanted to pursue career-wise. I wanted something even more outside and uh, a little bit more labor intensive, so I switched over to geology, and that's what I'm currently uh, studying and extremely happy with. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah any any in environmental uh, geology, so uh, really found your passion. Oh, absolutely, it's great. Well, Eric, we're going to take a uh, short break, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. The conflict in Darfur has led to some of the worst human rights abuses. More than 200,000 people have been killed. 2.5 million have been displaced. Families torn apart. Please, take a stand with us. Let the people of Darfur know they are not alone. Join us. Join us. Join us at aidstillrequired.org. And do something for Darfur. Together. Together. Together, we have the power to change the world. What do you stand for? Just buzzed. He didn't tell us that, sir. You're right, this isn't happening. He'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Game 
year's MVP goes to Jake. Take steroids and eventually everyone will see you for what you really are. A fake, a fraud, an asterisk. Don't be an asterisk. Hello and welcome back to Starting Point. My, I'm your host, Jay Brenneman. I'm, we're back with Eric Walton. Eric Walton is an Afghanistan war veteran who recently transitioned to college and is now seeking his, uh, or pursuing his passion of, of being a geologist. Eric, we talked in the first half quite a bit about you, the transition from civilian to military. Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, what you do when you're not in the classroom, when you're not studying? Do you have any hobbies, interests, things that you've been pursuing? In um, yes. Uh, starting out, I'm the president of the Student Veterans Association here on campus. Okay. Uh, what, is, what does the Student Veterans Association mean? What, what do they do? Who are the members? Uh, the Student Veterans Association is uh, it's open to anyone. Um, so as far as membership, uh, mostly pertaining to uh, or consisting of uh, veterans, uh, Army National Guard, Reserve, or any uh, reserve component soldiers currently attending the university, um, also dependents, so a uh, son or daughter or um, husband or wife of a service member, uh, and anyone who just wants to give back as far as in the uh, veteran community. Our major purpose is uh, reintegration and providing um, peer support and, and a community for veterans coming home uh, and going to be uh, studying here on campus to be able to give back to the campus and the community through continued service. So perhaps also a little bit of camaraderie or opportunity to meet others who have similar experience or similar backgrounds. But I want to talk a little bit about what you said, uh, giving back uh, to the community or doing some service work. So. Tell me why somebody who had already sacrificed or given quite a bit uh, to their country and, and uh, service to, uh, in the military, tell me why somebody would want to, uh, when they get back to civilian life, continue to uh, volunteer or serve in the, in the community? Well, I, I know from myself, uh, and, you know, I, I enjoy working, uh, you know, being continuously active and uh, being part of something, and that's one a huge component to um, the military lifestyle. You are, you know, even though you may be a soldier in the army, you are, you know, that uh, piece in the huge component. So it's providing more teamwork and also uh, to build relationships outside of uh, just on campus. You know, building relationships in the community and opening up the doors for other involvements. Uh, so some of those, uh, by engaging and networking in the community, perhaps that uh, leads to a little bit more of a strong foundation for a veteran in the community. Would you say that maybe that uh, the benefit to that is that they're not just isolated or all alone, um, uh, so they have friends, but also perhaps uh, professional or job opportunities or internship experiences or? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's plenty of... Uh, internships that uh, get started from the relationships that we've built, but it, it also works both ways. Uh, being able to re reintegrate the uh, soldier or sailor, marine, airman um, back into the community and then building the relationships, but also showing the community uh, and breaking down any stereotypes of you know, all service members coming back currently being broken. Um, so, you know, by us working uh, to put projects in place to be, you know, annual things for any other students uh, later on after I graduate or anybody else is involved with the SVA can continue these service projects and, you know, build a great name for uh, veterans in the Edinburgh area. So what are these, some of these qualities that uh, business leaders or nonprofits or other organizations on or off campus, what, what are some of the qualities that they gain by engaging or bringing on uh, student veterans? Uh, one would definitely be work ethic um, and uh, many other values uh, such as integrity and honesty. Um, those are huge components uh, to what veterans bring to the table. Um, we're usually very, very timely 
uh, and you know most most branches you know our saying goes if you're early you're on time and if you're on time you're late uh, so timely um, you know good quality uh, work ethic and uh, just would you say right. like mission oriented do you think that oh, that's I, something I, yeah a uh, give a veteran a task and um, more than likely and I'm sure there are a few uh, out there that may not represent that perfectly, but I would say the vast majority are uh, going to be putting forth uh, one, 110% for everything that you require. So let's fast forward, uh, perhaps just visioning your future situation, and perhaps we can, you know, broaden that to, uh, concept of, of other student veterans. So you're going on to be a geologist or somebody who works in the natural sciences. Yeah, you're doing a lot of community and service work right now. Um, how do you see that fitting in to your in, when you're when you're working and you've you've gone on to graduate and you reached the uh, you succeeded academically that, that you're pursuing? Uh, well, for myself, uh, once again, being being a part of uh, a larger unit or even just a, a team uh, can mean a lot. You know, being able to work on a team of researchers uh, for whatever it may be, in, in my case, geology, uh, being able to come together and with a, a common purpose or task or mission and work on that efficiently. Uh, but my military experience and the things that we're doing through the SVA, uh, I'm hoping to, and it is building uh, a lot better communication skills with general public and also uh, any uh, public officials, and um, I'm blanking. So if if uh, if somebody in the military, they have family relatives in the military, or they're thinking about getting out, uh, do you suggest that their first stop, other than uh, going to school, and when their first stop should be meeting with the members of a student veteran association? Oh yeah, uh, we. Uh, we encourage any any veteran or dependent uh, coming into the school uh, to meet with their, uh, for, for us it would be the Veteran Success Center here on campus, um, but we have relations with uh, the other universities as well and their student veteran organizations. Uh, some, of them, some of them are just getting off the ground and that can be a great way to... A lot of networking out. just oh. like you did in the military. Yes. How can somebody get a hold of you if they're thinking about either attending uh, Edinburgh University and, and they're a veteran, uh, how can they get a hold of you uh, or what kind of uh, contact information would you like to share? Uh, best way to get a hold of us is uh, to contact the Veteran Success Center or uh, probably email at um, veterans, or veterans at edinburgh.edu. Uh, those get forwarded straight to us. And you're on Facebook too. Yes, uh, the Student Veterans Association is on Facebook. Uh, and you can uh, like our page and be able to see everything that we're posting. Follow you guys. Yep. Yeah. Good. Well, Eric, I do appreciate the time that uh, you shared with us today, and I wish you luck in everything that you have going forward. Thanks again. Yeah, thanks, Jay. <laughs> that was our first show today with veteran Eric Walton. Look for us next time where we will continue to interview Community, people from the community who are giving back in a positive way. Thank you.